All right, you guys. I'm ready to finally just sit down with you and chat about the first week for reals. I went out, got the matcha. Oh my God, it is so gross. I'm going to get a matcha for Gary and I because I've run out at home. So now my bank account is taking a hit because I'm spending like $15 a day on matcha. Today's a really busy day. I leave for, uh, for Pittsburgh tomorrow where my parents recently relocated to. And later today in this video, I'm gonna update you on how my first week went and the workout that I did this morning. So I'm gonna go grab this matcha and then we'll chat in a bit about what I've learned this first week, how much weight I've lost and all that good stuff. We, I went out, got the matcha, came back. Gary's actually off camera, chilling. Hi, Gary. Oh. His work got canceled today because his students were sick. Yes. Students were sick. He's a tennis coach. Okay, so I wanted to just sit down and have a quick chat with you guys and tell you what my first reactions from the first week of my fitness challenge were, how I've done the results, what made it hard, like what made it easy, all of the kind of things and observations. So last week I completed all my workouts and I hit my macros really, really well. What I discovered off the bat, the biggest thing was that I had estimated to Lizzie, my coach, Fresa Fuerte, check her out if you haven't. I We had estimated when I kept a food journal to check where my metabolism was currently at, that I was probably eating somewhere around 1750 calories a day. And when I started my macros at maintenance and and as the week was going through, I could feel my body was in a deficit. So the bad news on this was that I miscalculated my maintenance calories, which is very common. We tend to underreport what we're eating. The good news to this is that it means my metabolism was a heck of a lot faster than I thought. I was probably averaging 2,000 and up a day and maintaining at 120 pounds, so and 17.8% body fat. So. That was cool to see that my metabolism was a lot faster than I estimated, but then I did end up being in a deficit this week and I didn't want to be, we didn't want to be. So I did end up losing some weight, which we'll talk about. And it also made the macros a little bit more challenging because suddenly if you're dieting, which is, you know, you don't want to be in too steep of a deficit, leads to, you know, cravings, hunger, binging, literally slows your metabolism down. So it's not really the goal here. Um, but that being said, some good things came out of it figured out that I was in fact eating way more calories than 1750. Morning. Good morning guys. Just woke up. Gary and I accidentally slept in a bit and I'm going to go to the gym downstairs and get a little bit of an upper body chest workout in. It's raining today, super gloomy outside, but so I'm eating my pre-workout meal. I used to mostly train fasted, not because it does anything significant. You don't need to do fasted workouts in order to get great results. Um, I just used to do them because I wasn't as hungry in the morning, but now that I'm really trying to be more aggressive with building muscle, really making sure that I have a solid, solid high carb, high protein meal in the morning, right before my workout, and then I also have another really high carb, high protein meal right after to really just pad the carbs around the workout so I can make the most, my body can make the most out of my blood sugar and put it towards repairing the muscle tissues instead of, you know, if you eat a lot of sugar during other times of the day and you don't have anywhere to store it because our storage, our, um, our fats, what am I trying to say? This is why I don't talk about science before, I don't know, 10 a.m. Our energy stores, hello April, our energy stores are not that big. So if you eat a ton of carbs, and carbs are good, you need them at every meal. So not hating on carbs. But if you eat a really high amount, like when you're not active, they might not necessarily go to use, and then they'll just get stored as fat cells. So I'm trying to make the most out of my carbohydrates. And I have some 0% Fahe yogurt, Greek yogurt. I have some oats and honey granola, that's like the carbs. Banana is the carbs. Chia seeds, um, mostly for fiber, but they have fat, protein, and carbs in them. The yogurt is the protein for the most part. So it's about 30 grams of protein, maybe like eight grams of fat, and roughly 60 grams of carbs. So that's a lot. 
So the first few days were really hard just for that reason. I felt, you know, I've done this a lot. So I felt my body starting to like tip into that deficit while working out really hard. So what I did in response, instead of changing the macros, cause I wanted to have some really good data for Lizzie to look at, we, I just decided to cut my cardio down. So I was doing probably 80 minutes ish total, not every day, 80 minutes total of cardio when, you know, weekly, on average and that would be just walking like incline walks um so i just tapered it down to about 60 minutes so that really only looked like it was two 20 minute walks and then a 15 minute walk roughly that's what i did pretty much and it was very you know i just hop on the treadmill after i work out it's really no big deal and just get some extra steps in it's not cardio that's of a high intensity pounding the body that's like very stressful and it's going to have a huge um hit on my appetite hormones which is as petite women that's what we want to avoid Cardio can be really detrimental for petite women because if we do too much in general, our body's going to react by tipping our hormones towards being more hungry. It messes with our leptin and our ghrelin, which is our appetite hormones, our satiation. So I just shaved a couple of minutes off there and that helped adjust sort of um, how I was feeling in terms of hunger. And something new that I've incorporated into my training, thanks to Lizzie, is tempo training. So this is pausing at certain moments in an exercise to have a longer period of what's known as time under tension. And time under tension is the amount of time, the length of time that you're, um, that you're putting your muscle under stress and that's going to help it get stronger over time. So for example, eccentrics or lowering push-ups would be an example. So when you start in the push-up plank and you slowly lower down tempo three, press back up, there's no pause at the bottom or the top. That's an example of tempo training. So as the muscle stretches and lengthens as you're going into the push-up, you are going slower and the time under tension, so the time that you're working is longer rather than just doing one quick push-up. Um, that's less work done overall if you're doing really fast push-ups. Um, versus really going slow and having that time that the muscle is working be longer than usual. So we've incorporated um, some time under tension and tempo training in pretty much a lot of the lifts, most of the accessory lifts, and I really felt that in this first week. The first few days I was incredibly sore. And within that vein, I know that you guys have asked me a bunch of times, is soreness good? Does soreness mean that the program's working? And no, being sore has nothing to do with losing weight or the program being really good. Typically we get sore when we impose demands on our body that it's not familiar with. So that could be a change in intensity in your program. It could be doing a completely new form of exercise that you haven't done. Even if you're in incredible shape, if you have a new program or you change your program, you will probably get some soreness. And it's just your body experiencing new motions and movements that it's not used to and responding with this stress response where it's just healing the muscle. So it has nothing to do with the program being really good or anything like that. It's literally just, oh, I changed my program and now I'm a little bit more sore than normal. So that's been really cool. I'm really excited about introducing these tempos into my training to kind of bring my strength to the next level. Okay, let's talk about my results from this week. I'm really excited. I'm bringing up the Renfo app right now and I'll show you guys where I'm at. Since I my before video with you guys, I'm down by 2.6 pounds. So I went from 122.4 to 119.8. I haven't been under 20, 120 pounds in a while. Did we want this to happen? No, did it happen? Yeah, it was a pretty fast rate. Another thing that can contribute to this is I did change my eating a little bit in terms of the types of foods I was eating. I ate uh, slightly lower fat and much higher carbs, kept the protein high as I always do. And also, like I said in the first video, I'm playing around with uh, nutrient timing. So padding the carbs around when I can utilize them the most in my workouts before and after. Throughout the day, the carbs become um, lower in glycemic index, so less sugary carbs, think fibrous vegetables and legumes. So that could have also affected my weight as well. I'm also probably holding a little bit less water, light, water weight, so I would never really assume that all 2.6 of those pounds is purely fat. There's also a little bit of muscle loss that came into play, um, most likely, and a little bit of water loss. In terms of my body fat percentage, it went down 0.4, so that's really cool. It went from 17.8 to 17.4. And then in terms of my muscle mass, I actually increased my muscle mass despite being in a deficit on accident. So I went from 47.9% 
to 48.1. So it was a 0.2 increase, modest increase, but it's great to see that I was still able to build muscle while losing fat at the same time and have a really strong week. As far as next steps, basically, Lizzie and I decided we had a check-in this morning. We had a little FaceTime. I'm gonna stay at the, these macros just to see if it levels out the next three days. If it continues to be like I lose a full pound, we're gonna increase the, the macros um, quite a bit just to slow down the rate of fat loss. You want slow fat loss. You This stuff takes time. You can't do it in a week. You can't do it in four weeks. You do need to slow down the process because your metabolism is going to adjust better and then you'll be able to hold on to your results for longer. So we're definitely just looking at the data as well as how I feel and kind of using all these metrics to make um, some really good decisions about how to move forward. So my biggest takeaway from this week for me is that so for the last year, I've, I told you guys I was intuitive eating. I kind of ate whatever I want. I would eat late at night. I would snack. I would just sort of do what I wanted. And while that was fun, every morning that I woke up, I felt a little bloated. Like I would just kind of not feel lean or like, I just didn't feel my best. And doing the, within the first few days of this challenge, I felt so strong and so lean and empowered again. And so I just want to share with you guys that feeling amazing is really only a day away. It's never that far, but it does require changing something in your lifestyle right now to get there. And it's, it's crazy to think back on all the days that I just kept letting myself feel not my best every morning because it was in my mind I had built it up to be too hard to to change while I was working on my business and doing all these other things but it was a really really valuable lesson for me to remember that feeling amazing is literally only ever a couple days or one day away you can change really small things and kind of see a really big result and feel really good and feel really invigorated and one of the most motivating things for people kind of lights this fire and creates this momentum it also builds something that I call self-efficacy. So if you can see that you're capable of doing something, it's easier to do it a second time, third time, fourth time. So it was really cool to start this snowball again and see that like I can feel really good within 24 hours if I just you know change a few things and really commit. And that's enough to get the snowball rolling and then the rest of the week got easier and easier. That being said, it was still a difficult week. I had to track macros again, so I had to carve out time for that. I had to meal prep, which I already was doing, but I had to be more diligent about it. Um, I really focused on prioritizing my sleep, and overall, I just felt really happy. I felt really good to have this structure and this routine. Having like a really long career in athletics, I'm really used to routine and having structure, so it's sort of just, it feels more natural to me. So if you guys are starting something, I. You know, you might not want to start it now over the holidays because now is a crazy time, but maybe in the new year, this could be some, some good advice for you guys to just um, remember that starting is the hardest part. A day later, you'll be so happy you started and you'll be in a completely different place mentally than you were the day before. Oh, okay, I also wanted to talk about balance. So I did go to a holiday party on Saturday and I did watch Gary compete in a tennis tournament the night before, and both times I was able to enjoy. I had a nice cold beer on Friday watching Gary play tennis. I don't even drink beer, but it just was really good, and it was fine. Um, I woke up the next day and was still losing weight, and um, at the holiday party, I made sure I ate a really solid PFF meal before I went so that I wouldn't crave all of the treats and everything. I had no cravings at all, no desire to really indulge. If I did, I would have had it. Um, I had a drink while I was there, I socialized, it was really fun, I didn't feel like I was sacrificing anything, and throughout the week I also made sure that I had dessert because the thing that you really need to set yourself up for success when you're eating healthy is not restricting yourself. You can set macro goals and incorporate treats and desserts into them, and that's so important for your long-term success. When we try to cut everything out, that's when the problems start to happen. That's when we start labeling foods as good and bad. That's when we start craving these sugars and these foods so much. So I made sure I had I had some biscottis that Gary brought home. I had um, some cookies we bought. I had some macaroons. And so it, I didn't cut sugar 100% out, and I wouldn't recommend that you do that. If you eat, 85% whole unprocessed foods for the rest of your diet and then you have some treats. This is how you, this is not gonna ruin your diet or your, you shouldn't diet, but your nutrition. This is going to improve it because you're going to have that, um, 
that treat that's going to keep you motivated and you're not going to feel deprived. And that's so, so, so important. I cannot emphasize it enough. If you want to be able to go to holiday parties and um, you want to be able to enjoy alcohol and treats, you totally can. You can just kind of build them into your macronutrients as a part of what you're trying to eat for the day. And my biggest tip for this is plan what you're going to eat roughly the night before. So this saves my life. This has always been something I do when I track macros. I just go ahead and the night before start to make meals that fit your macronutrients so that when you wake up in the morning, you're not scrambling to try to make all these meals and make the numbers work. Just do it the night before, load it up in your app. You can change it the next day, but that will allow you to budget for things like holiday parties or a drink at night or whatever. So that was really cool. This was probably the first time where, you know, I was able to like really enjoy dessert and I had some alcohol and socialized and I felt really good really confident if anything that's just a really good indicator of how the next 12 weeks or 11 weeks will go um, so I hope this was helpful for you guys let me know uh, what else you want to see what you want to hear about as you guys know I'm doing a blog update every week as well and monthly I'll be taking uh, measurements there will be different metrics as we go breaking down the data um, and I want to make this as helpful and educational for you guys as possible. So let me know what you want to see in the comments. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great and wonderful Monday. And I hope you're having a great holiday season. And uh, Gary, you want to come sign out for me? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Tell them to like and subscribe. Make sure you like, subscribe. And Make sure you like, subscribe, <laughs> and, and have a great us. day. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram <laughs> and on YouTube. Follow. Follow. You say it with me. No, you have to say it. Follow, follow the small letters for more content, content tailored to petite women. women. Follow small letters for more content tailored to petite women. Bye guys. Cut that whole last part out. <laughs>